Hey there do-it-yourself technicians and teachers. With a whole bunch of school closures at the moment, lots of teaching and learning is moving online. So I thought I'd do what I can to provide some special resources. Not specifically for teachers, but definitely including them and helping to get their work online. Today, we're going to talk about screen capture. Today, I'm going to be talking about four different apps. The Snipping Tool, Snip and Sketch, iSpring FreeCam 8 and Screencastify. So what I've done is I've put a little bit of a menu up here and timestamps so that you can jump directly to the part of the video that you're looking for. Or just watch the whole lot all the way through. One of the basics of being able to do anything about teaching online is the ability to capture your screen. In Windows 10, this has always been done with an application called the Snipping Tool. Snipping tool allows you to capture the whole screen or a part of the screen, either a nice rectangle, a window, or a freeform selection, manipulate it, and leave it on the clipboard so that you can paste it into other applications. The snipping tool is super simple to use. Start with the start menu and type the word snip, and the snipping tool will pop up and you can run it. From here, you can select whichever mode you want, freeform, rectangular, window, or a full screen snip. Full screen will obviously select the entire screen. A rectangular snip will just select a specific area. And a freeform snip will allow you to actually cut out an area. Every time I snip something, it drops me back to this snipping tool page where I can actually make any annotations that I want to make. Okay, pick up a uh, yeah, blue pen. And I can actually say, do a big arrow towards Melbourne. There's a highlighter tool. and an eraser tool. I can also pop it open in Paint 3D if I really wanted to. My preference would be to actually open it in Paint.net. And the great thing about this is whatever you snip is always on the clipboard. So if I was to switch to another app, say Word, I could just simply paste it in or an email and paste it straight in to that application. The other options I've got, I can save it copy it, which it's always copied anyway, or send it via email, either directly in an email or as an attachment. Really handy. One little known feature of the snipping tool is the delay tool. You can set a delay, say five seconds, so that you can open a menu and have that included in your snip. So I click new, I go over here and I click the bookmark menu and it pops out this menu that I otherwise wouldn't have been able to see. Now it gives me the option to pick my mode and I can take a screenshot of the open menu, which otherwise I can't do with a screenshot utility. This is really handy if you're teaching somebody to use a piece of software. Next up is Snip and Sketch or my brain keeps wanting to say scratch and sniff and those of you in the 40 somethings will know exactly what I mean and hopefully have a laugh. As the snipping tool window says, snipping tool is moving. It's becoming a new app called snip and sketch, which does basically all of the same things, somewhat different, in different interface. Um, the timing is now either instant three seconds or 10 seconds which is probably good. You can also, let's snip something. Let's snip the snipping tool. That's kind of weird. There's a few more tools. There's a ballpoint pen, a pencil, a highlighter, an eraser. There's also a ruler. If you need to measure how big something is on screen, that's kind of useful and a protractor if you need to measure the angle of something. It's like, 
How about that? It's a 90 degree angle. You could also crop your snip if you've made it too big. And then click the tick button. But everything else is pretty much the same. You can save it, copy it, and share it just as you would have done with the snipping tool. If you're new to screen capture, it's probably worth going straight to snip and sketch because the snipping tool will probably be going away. If you've been using snipping tool for a while, well, this is a good introduction on the new upgrade that's coming. The next program I want to talk about is FreeCam 8 by a company called iSpring. This is part of a suite of other products that they have, but this is a free tool for capturing videos of what you do on the screen rather than just still images. I've been using this since the channel started to capture video of what I've done on my computer. Freecam is like the snipping tool, except it's recording what you're doing on the screen over time as a video. So what we do, the interface is simple. You click new recording, and then you select the area of the screen that you want to record. You can either select full screen, a specific area, or an entire application. application. In this case, let's go full screen. So you can see that it's showing the dashes in the corner of where it's going to record. Audio is not recording in this case. There are some settings in here, like the key to pause and resume, which is really important, and the key to stop. These are all customizable because if you happen to need to press the F9 key or the escape or the F10 key while you're recording, then that would back up your recording. I'm going to leave these as they are. From here, it's as simple as clicking record. You get your countdown and then you can do whatever it is that you want to do. And you're done. And then when you're finished, you press escape. When you're done, you're presented with the file. And you've got some editing capabilities built in, or you can simply save the video to your computer or upload it to YouTube directly from the app. This program is neat, simple, and free. I really like it. And I've been using it, as I said, for every one of the screen captures you've seen in these videos. The last program I want to show you is called Screencastify, and it's actually a Google Chrome plugin. For more information about Google Chrome plugins, you can see our episode on that above. I'd originally written this plugin off as only being able to record within Google Chrome, which seemed logical, but no, it can actually do more than that. In fact, everything you've seen recorded in this episode so far, with me in the orange shirt, has been recorded with Screencastify. Everything recorded in the green shirt, I've recorded separately and put in later in post-production, which is what I usually do, but it is a lot more work. To make things more confusing, I had to record this in iSpring FreeCam so that I could record what I was doing in Screencastify. I hope that makes sense. I know I'm confused. It did my head in for a while and push my computer pretty hard to recording to the screen twice at the same time. To run Screencastify, click on the orange arrow icon up in the Google Chrome toolbar. One downside of Screencastify is that it's the free version of a paid app. And so they put a limitation of it with a maximum of five minute videos. Though there's nothing to stop you recording multiple five minute videos and stringing them together. When you activate it, you get the option of recording the browser tab, the whole desktop, or just the webcam. In this case, we want to record the whole desktop experience. We want the microphone active and the webcam on. Now we click record, but it doesn't start recording yet. Firstly, you get a preview of the camera and the option to move it anywhere around the screen that you might want to put it, depending on when it's going to be less intrusive on whatever it is you're trying to record. And you also get to select whether you want to record the entire screen or just a specific application. We're going to click on the entire screen, click on the screen, and then click share. You get the usual three second counting, and then it starts recording. There are extra tools here that you can use while you're recording. A pen tool, an eraser tool, 
and an option to highlight with a red circle where it is that you're clicking when you click the mouse. Then you can record whatever it is you want to record and when you're finished click the stop sharing button. By default all recordings are saved to your Google Drive. You can rename this clip by clicking on the name up at the top and giving it a new name. They have a built-in editor which you'll see next week and options to share directly to Google Classroom and YouTube. And there's also options down below to save as a WebEM file or download as an MP4. All in all, I really like this program. I think it works really well, especially the webcam extension, which will save a lot of time during editing. And you'll probably see a fair bit more of it on this channel. The five minute limit is a little bit of a pain, although it's not massively expensive to upgrade to the full version, but it will be a bit of a pain for teachers starting out putting their classes online. But then it actually depends on the attention span of the kids you're trying to teach. Sometimes five minutes is a good place to stop, do something else, and then come back with another tutorial. Basically, just breaking it up into smaller sections. Thanks for watching. Next time, we'll be linked up here. A bit of a tutorial on video editing packages and which one might be the best for you. My question for you is, what do you want to learn about? Leave a comment for me down below and I'll see what I can do to help you out. The Tech Doctor exists to help you teach online and become your own technician. We have some old episodes that you may not have seen before here and here. And if you click the subscribe button down here, you won't miss any new episodes as they come out. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.